Creatine, the most studied sports supplement in the world. And it works, even if you've never touched a barbell. But for the last 20 years, people have been convinced that it's basically powdered steroids in a tub. <coughs> Today, we're going to prove how wrong they were and why you should probably be taking creatine, whether you're trying to deadlift 500 pounds or just remember where you left your keys. We'll cover the benefits, the science, the myths, and by the end, you'll know exactly how to take it and exactly what's bullshit. And yes, I'm talking to you, Derek, from 2005. But before we get going, I'm Jake and this is Bottom Line. And I love supplements. I've spent over a decade in the industry, on the brand side and on the manufacturing side. Now, I break it all down so your kidneys don't have to. And hey, if you're thinking about launching your own supplement brand or already have one and want help solving problems or scaling smarter, I do consulting. Hit the link in my channel bio to book a session. Dude, I heard creatine will shut down your kidneys. Like, forever. A dangerous new steroid is sweeping through high schools. Creatine crisis? Hmm. Subtle notes of peer-reviewed research. Oh, Derek, you sweet summer child. All right, let's talk about what creatine actually does without turning this into a high school chemistry lecture because I would already be tuned out. Creatine is basically your body's battery backup system for quick bursts of energy. You know when your phone's at 1% and you plug in one of those cheap portable chargers? That's creatine for your muscles, except this one actually works. In the gym, it means you might squeeze out an extra rep or two. On the field, it might mean you recover faster between sprints or jumps. And over time, those tiny boosts add up to more strength and more muscle. Oh, and the part everybody loves to talk about, water retention. Ew. Creatine does pull water into your muscles, but that's a good thing. It's intramuscular water, meaning your muscles look fuller and more defined, not puffy like you just mainlined a gallon of ramen broth. It's the kind of water weight you actually want. But here's the plot twist. Newer research says creatine isn't just for athletes. We're talking brain health, heart health, even bone density. Your nervous system loves creatine like millennials love complaining about the housing market. It's basically free protection against decline. In some studies, creatine has helped with concussion recovery, improved memory, and even reduced mental fatigue. That's right, creatine could help you remember your Netflix password. And no, you don't have to deadlift 500 pounds to get those benefits. Creatine works whether you're a competitive athlete or just competing with your toddler over who can throw a tantrum the longest. Now, let's talk about the 47 different kinds of creatine you've seen on supplement shelves. Because yes, supplement companies love making simple things complicated so they can charge you more. The gold standard is creatine monohydrate. It's been studied for decades, it works, it's safe, and it's cheap. This is the Toyota Corolla of supplements. Not flashy, but it'll get you exactly where you need to go forever. Then there are the premium versions. I'm a premium man, or five-star man. Creatine HCL, buffered creatine, and creatine nitrate. Some of them are fine, but none of them are proven to be better than monohydrate, except at draining your wallet faster. And then there's creatine ethyl ester, which is basically the fire festival of supplements. It promised a lot, delivered nothing, and most of it never even made it into your muscles. And here's the truth. 95% of the time, the brand doesn't matter. Just look for one that's third-party tested. NSF, informed choice, that kind of thing. So you know it's actually creatine and not mystery dust from a warehouse floor. My advice? Skip the fancy labels and the influencer signature blends. Just get plain creatine monohydrate and spend the extra money on something more exciting. Like literally anything else. All right, so how much creatine should you actually take? For 99% of people, the answer is simple. Five grams a day. Doesn't matter if you're 150 pounds or built like the mountain from Game of Thrones. Five grams will get you to full saturation. If you wanna speed things up, you can do what's called a loading phase. 20 grams a day, split into four doses for about a week. That'll get you to max saturation faster, but here's the thing. If you just take five grams a day, you'll be there in about two weeks anyway. Loading is like paying for overnight shipping when regular shipping is free and only takes a couple extra days. Yeah, you can, but do you really need to? And here's a little insider secret. Supplement companies love putting loading instructions on the label because, surprise, you'll burn through your tub four times faster and have to buy more. 
So unless you're a pro strongman or a bodybuilder over 250 pounds who trains like it's a full-time job, you don't need to go above five grams. More isn't better. It's just more. Now let's talk timing because there's a lot of nonsense floating around about the exact minute you need to take creatine. Here's the truth. Timing does not matter. Creatine works by saturating your muscles over days and weeks, not minutes. Taking it right before your workout won't suddenly turn you into the Hulk, no matter what the pre-workout label says. The only thing that really matters is consistency. Taking it every day, even on rest days. If you start skipping doses, your muscle creatine levels will drop and you'll lose the benefits. My advice? Habit stack it. Take it with something you already do every day, like your morning coffee, your multivitamin, or doom scrolling TikTok in bed. If you tie creatine to an existing habit, you won't forget it. And for mixing, toss it in water, protein shakes, whatever. Creatine is stable and liquid for days, so you're not losing your potency if you prep a shake the night before so you don't forget. You can dry scoop it too, but be ready to experience what I can only describe as powder lung. <coughs> I think I'm getting the black lung, Bob. Time for my favorite part, smashing creatine myths that just will not die. Myth number one, creatine is a steroid. No, steroids are hormones. Creatine is an amino acid derivative your body already makes. Calling creatine a steroid is like calling chicken breast a performance enhancing drug. <laughs> Myth number two, creatine damages your kidneys. This one exists because people confuse creatine with creatinine, which is a marker doctors use to check kidney function. Totally different thing. That's like saying your house is on fire because you saw smoke from your neighbor's barbecue. Myth number three, creatine causes dehydration or cramps. Studies actually show the opposite. It can help with hydration inside your muscles. So unless you're washing it down with nothing but whiskey, you're probably fine, as long as you're drinking enough water in the first place. Myth number four, women shouldn't take creatine. <laughs> Completely false. In fact, women can see huge benefits for strength, bone density, and even brain health, just like men. Wow. Bottom line, if someone tells you creatine is dangerous, there's a 90% chance they're repeating something they heard in 2004 from a guy who called energy drinks illegal speed. So what's the catch? Are there any side effects? For most people, no. The biggest thing you'll notice is a couple of pounds of water weight in the first few weeks. But remember, that water is inside your muscles, making them look fuller, not sloshing around under your skin. Some people say creatine upsets their stomach. Usually, that's because of fillers or low quality powder, not the creatine itself. If that happens to you, switch to pure micronized creatine monohydrate and you're probably good. And if you genuinely can't tolerate it, skip it. It's not an essential nutrient. It's just one of the best, safest, cheapest supplements you can take. No kidney explosions, no sudden biceps growth overnight, unfortunately. Here's the takeaway. Take five grams of creatine monohydrate every day. Timing doesn't matter, consistency does. It's safe, it works, and it's not just for people who live at the gym. You'll get stronger, recover faster, look a little more jacked, and maybe even protect your brain and heart in the process. And somewhere out there, Derek from 2005 is still warning his friends about kidney failure. Oh my God. If you found this helpful, hit subscribe and stick around. I'm here so you can stop wasting money on stuff that's not worth it and start actually getting the results you want. Thanks for checking out Bottom Line. I'll see you next time.